when Checo Perez decided to bin it in Monaco qualifying, we got our first shots of the RB19 floor. Yes, that much-awaited floor that all the teams were looking forward to to try and understand what really makes the RB19 so special. In this video, let us dive into the aero mechanisms or some of the potential aero mechanisms at play of the RB19. Let's dive into it then. Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and welcome back to my channel F1 Aeronomics, in which we talk about F1 Aeronomics and we speculate potential aero mechanisms at play by using CFD models developed with some of our partners. Talking about partners, this video is sponsored by Mantium Flow. More about them in the description below. When the first shots of the RB19 came out, it had everybody in awe because it looked so three-dimensional, it was almost artistic and organic and it was beautifully carved in terms of all the curvatures that existed. So in this video we try and understand and break down these features that are present on the floor and when we started doing so and tried putting them in a CFD model some really surprising results came out and I think I'm going to call this like the media name for this would be the RB19 lateral double diffuser. Yes I think it's back. So in this video, let us try and understand the first lateral diffuser and in the second part of this video, we'll understand the second one. So let's get into it then. We all know how the front floor of an F1 car acts like a Venturi tunnel if you take a side view section of the floor. There are tons of YouTube videos that explain this. However, what most of us miss out on is how the front floor works laterally. To understand how the front floor of the RB19 potentially works as a lateral diffuser, let us capture some of its features and understand what they are doing. The front floor basically comprises of four features. The front floor outwashing streaks which are marked in green. The front floor kick where there is a local drop in static pressure. This kick acts like the throat of a diffuser which is marked in blue. You have the expanding configuration of the keel and the innermost streak. So if you look at the orange line and if you look at the innermost streak, that is the green line, you have an expanding configuration right there in conjunction with the first streak. So that area in itself acts like its own diffuser. And you have the floor edge winglets, which are very novel to the RB19. But before we try and understand what each feature brings to the party, let us try and explain what lateral expansion is. So lateral expansion of a diffuser in simple terms is a drop in suction that is caused due to the expansion of volume laterally. The same principles of vertical expansion apply. The more you expand, the higher drop in static pressure you obtain at the throat. But pushing the expansion mechanism is not easy as the vortex structures that sustain the diffuser expansion have to travel in an adverse pressure gradient in which if the vortex is pushed hard, it tends to break down within the diffuser causing a transitory stall. Since this is an open system, the more you are able to expand laterally, the higher mass flow rate you are able to entrain via larger velocity, which results in larger static pressure drops accompanied by stronger straight vortices, which are absolutely fundamental in generating the large downforce that is generated by the current generation of F1 flows. So now let us first get into what the front flow streaks do and how do they combine with the kick to kind of create a diffuser-like section. To simplify how the flow generates downforce, you can think of it as two mechanisms at play. First is the conventional Venturi tunnel expansion. Although one has to be very careful in applying this as the Venturi effect is strictly for a closed system such as pipes. The floor of an F1 car, however, works more like an open venturi system which has different aerodynamic characteristics which is more vortex driven than convection driven. The second mechanism at play is how delta wings generate lift that is lift produced via the static pressure drop introduced by strong vortices. Exploiting this second effect is where I believe the RB19 thrives. Over here, we can see a comparison of the RB19, the W14 and the SF23 straights. And you can see that all of them have their own philosophy at play. 
The SF23 and the W14 have relatively simple strakes where they are all simply outwashing, but the RB19 has a lot of reflex curvature in their strakes itself. So, what do these strakes actually do, and why does Red Bull have reflex curvature in their strakes? Like to generate the strong vortex structures, the front strakes are intricately designed and iterated. To get to their design right, an engineer needs to account for the local flow field upstream that is coming from the suspension fairings. So it is a function of what suspension setup you're running in the first place. And he also needs to understand how the front straight curvature affects the generation of the vortex. And finally, understand at what point do you shed the vortex such that it synergizes with the vortices coming off from the other strakes such that it has a net beneficial effect downstream, right? And additionally, because these strakes are outwashing, they naturally promote lateral flow expansion. So how does the front kick come into picture? The front kick is a very unique feature of the RB19, which I'm sure has the other teams scratching their heads around. The kick basically refers to an aggressive transition region around the throat, which results in a large local drop in static pressure as marked in the figure in a blue line. And you can see the dash white lines, which kind of represents the expansion regions. And in its own right, it's not even a single diffuser here. They have like multiple expansion regions and something absolutely crazy happening here. But we've tried to break that down, right? And it's our job to try and understand and break this down into slightly simpler physics, if simpler exists in this case. The kick is primarily present in the region between the innermost straight and the keel curvature. And if you really, really look in detail, after the kick, what you'll see is that the innermost straight aggressively expands. And I'm sure this is them talking together because you have to consider that the expansion obviously would give you a higher drop in static pressure from the kick, but this would also affect the vortex characteristics that is shed from this streak. And Remember that the vortex that is shed from this strake is the most important vortex as it is a primary vortex of the entire floor system. So what unique benefits would the front floor kick provide? Well, this design could be useful for, in my opinion, two main reasons. Of obviously generate local front load by using the volume expansion present between the strakes and the keel, but also managing your primary vortex strength and swirl, which is the ratio of tangential velocity and axial velocity and determines the vortex stability as it travels downstream. So you need tools to try and control the health and the swirl of your vortex system so that you are able to make them perform across a large range of ride height conditions while still pushing them as hard as possible. Next talk is to understand how the floor straight vortices work together to promote natural expansion of the flow. So let's dive into this system. One inquisite feature we noticed in our simulation was the elliptical arrangement of the vortex structures in the flow when the floor is relatively flat and close to the ground. Now this is an arrangement that both Ferrari and Mercedes run with and we kind of to keep things simpler and easier we ran with this system to keep the floor as close and flat to the ground but that is not how the RB19 floor is. The RB19 floor is raised higher up which I think results in a slightly different merging mechanism. The vortex structure pattern also becomes elliptical due to the vertically converging nature of the floor. These two vortices initially are side by side, creating a flow vector which promotes outwash from the front floor as seen by the black arrow, thus promoting lateral expansion philosophy of the front car, making it behave like a lateral diffuser. However, the elliptical vortices itself are not really as effective in dropping the pressure as compared to a merged circular vortex you know like the helical merging of two vortices that is a really powerful mechanism compared to an two elliptical vortices sitting side by side from pictures that we have seen as i was hinting to earlier the rb19 main floor is much higher than that of the ferrari so i'll not be surprised if the red bull has given up some performance related to ground height and has been able to make up a lot of performance via the right vortex merging mechanism rather than being limited to these kind of dual elliptical vortex structures. So let us next look at the flow ridge winglets that probably every team is looking at and saying what the hell is going on there. 
and let us try and understand how it's helping to promote the lateral expansion philosophy that I'm talking about. The Red Bull RB19 has the most strikingly different floor edge winglets and probably every team of the grid is looking at them and thinking, what, wait, hold on, what is that doing? It's an upwashing cascade. So it will obviously generate local load via upwash. No, that's the easy part. But why is Red Bull not using a gurney configuration like everybody else on the grid on their floor? Well, we did a simplified version of this cascade on our CFD model and it gave us a very interesting insight. So if you look at the image on top, you have the normal floor edge on the left hand side and you have the cascaded floor edge on the right hand side. And what you'll see is that this cascade, other than just generating load via upwash, also sheds a vortex. And this additional vortex shed from the upwashing cascade helps to promote expansion, right? So our CFD results hinted us that the tip vortex shed from the inner edge of the cascade promotes outwash, continuing the whole lateral expansion philosophy further downstream with respect to where the strikes end. Because if you see, a lot of the teams are trying to use gurneys to create outwash behind the strike, behind where the strike ends. But Red Bull is doing that beautifully by generating another vortex and not just a gurney. So basically, you're using this floor edge winglets to extend the length of the floor, which can be used for flow expansion, which is incredibly smart. So this was my attempt to try and explain to you the aero mechanism that I believe is happening on the front floor of the RB19, which I call as the front lateral diffuser uh, from a lateral perspective. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Until then, keep learning some aero.